Welcome back to the channel folks. I've got another how-to guide for you and the subject of which is the classic Flak 36 Platoon from Flames of War, one of my all-time favourites. And for all you Blue Peter fans out there, here's the classic phrase, here's one I did earlier. This one is missing something, missing the bogies from the trails. Um, I kept them because I've got something I want to do with my desert 88. But that's another story, let's focus on this. He's a, a fantastic set. I mean, they're like mini dioramas. They've got a real sense of movement, front to back, with ammunition. Been taken out with these stacks of crates, stuffed into the breach and fired away. So it's a fantastic set. I have painted more of these than I can remember over the years. It was one of the have two items for German players when I was a commission painter. These ones are mine. They've been cobbled together, to be honest, a little bit here, a little bit there, because I didn't get the actual box set. But one of my friends has got one and has asked me to, um, to paint it in a very particular way for him. So we'll get straight over to that and see how they look. Maybe do a comparison towards the end, so you can see some different styles. So folks, let's get this box open and check out the contents. Whenever I do an unboxing, I'm always reminded of the movie Seven at the end, where you've got um, you got Brad Pitt shouting, what's in the box? What's in the box? And Samuel L. Jackson saying, don't open that box. Don't open that box. But I think he's probably, without knowing it, some kind of gamer, Brad Pitt, because he couldn't help it. He had to look in the box. Hopefully we've not got um, Gwyneth Paltrow's severed head in here, but uh, let's see. There we go. A lovely collection of resin vehicles and bases and our metal components now I've had a quick flip through this already to make sure that everything is here you know, you've got two barrels, two gun shields four sets of uh, bogies for the trails, I've got the eight wheels two each of the required halves of the um, the Call this man, it's just like the gun mounting, I suppose, and a few extra things like some shell cases, uh, sorry, uh, shell storage cases, some empty shell cases, a shell, the telephone wires that go on, the bogies, crew, you know, it's all there. Um, and the crew that are a really good combination of they look like really hard working guys, to be honest. This crew. All kinds of uniforms. You've got tunics and trousers, you've got overalls, you've got some camel smocks. So there's a, a nice variety of, um, of figures when it comes to the actual painting. Then we've got vehicles. This half track's particularly good because it's got the individually sculpted storage on it and I'm likely to want to add some to this as well. I can use the ammo boxes the um, spare shells for instance, you know, just to make it a bit more interesting, a bit more unique. It won't take a great deal of time to do that. Maybe a couple of bedrolls from Green Stuff, very quick to do. Then you've got the lovely bases, cruciform mount already on it, so that's going to cut down on assembly time and mounting um, to the base. It's going to need a good scrub. I typically always start before I considered doing any washing, I would get stuck in with a, a toothbrush. This has got quite a lot of dust on it. it. It's not dust from being 
left outside, it's just dust from the resin uh, manufacturing process. So I'd like to give it a good scrape with an old toothbrush. Don't borrow your wife's folks, you won't find it funny at all. And then, you know, so much of this is already here, it's just a matter of painting it. The bases um, go in these appropriate slots, certain figures for certain holes, you'll be able to figure that out. Some of them may need trimmed, uh, but I think this is a really good fit. But you probably have to do a bit of filling, but we'll come to that folks. So, there we go. Ready to get stuck into assembly, which there isn't too much of. Um, the guns are a bit tricky, but I'll show you how we do them. And I'll show you like the cleaning up process, you know. Getting rid of flash mold lines, what I do, and then how I glue them all together to make them stay together. So here we are with the usual um, selection of tools, files, a blunt knife, um, I say blunt to stop me cutting my fingers off, some snippers, and some of the pieces you'll see I'm using the snippers there to get to some of the really chunky bits of flash that are on these bogies and they can on um, on the one side of the bogey they can be quite uh, bad. That blood, by the way, is actually from cleaning uh, the um, the pieces using the toothbrush uh, uh, with some water. But there you go. Uh, better that than cutting your finger off. So you can see I am using all the tools together and I'm just trying to pare away the metal, bite bits off, use a knife to try and shape it, use a file to try and make it look a bit neater and, and give it the shape back. And you can quickly... Uh, Get a bit of care, making sure you don't cut off what you shouldn't. You can get back to um, the, the shape that you need. And you can also, in the case of these bogies, place them on the base in such a way that the worst side is, as I'm showing you there, the worst side is um, out of sight. Now, barrels can be awkward because they can be bent in all different directions. So I tend to start at the base of the bend and then go forward. No, so I just bend along, 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 along. And then filing, I roll the file, a flat file, I roll it over the barrel. I seem to be having trouble staying in shot, folks, so apologies for that. Apologies. Um, chunky bits, once again, you can use the snippers and you can use the um, uh, the blunt uh, hobby knife. And then the file to, to finish things off. These shields are a bit awkward. You can see that the moulds actually slip to a degree and it's quite common on this kit. So it takes a lot of filing um, on the side. I file it right the way down. I don't just try and smooth down the lump, but I keep going and going and going until the side is quite flat. You can see there, I basically create a new surface um, as opposed to just trying to remove the lump and there's a little bit of work elsewhere in the shield but otherwise it's uh, really quite simple and straightforward once you've got past the problems with the sides. Now I'm just dry fitting everything. The, uh, the gun tends to want to wander off towards the right as you're looking at it from the front. The, um, the two halves of the gun mount, but I see it be off camera again. Sorry, folks. Two after the gun mount tend to want tend to slip towards the right, so you've got to be careful when you drive fit in and file as required. Now, for gluing, I'm going to be using Arrowdite and Milliput. This is to get a long lasting, strong hold. So you can see here I've got the gun mounted backwards uh, just for the purposes of gluing it together. Putting arrowdite on there, squeezing it together, putting it on the bottom as well, into the gap in the middle. You know, so it's filling all the cavities, which will give a really strong hold. And then a bit of glue into the mounting points. And then goes the barrel. Tidy it up. 
with the glue spilled out on the base and then some arrowdite to hold it in place but make a so blue tack to hold it in place but make sure the blue tack isn't in contact with the arrowdite because that makes cleanup very very messy and you're seeing more of my hands than the figure just now apologies folks i'm just trying to make sure that the, the gun is straight as possible between the two halves of the mount and then arrowdite onto the gun shield, though there is an alternative way of doing this, it's actually a better way of doing it. You super glue the gun shield into place and then you put arrowdite on the underneath the following day. I had a few issues uh, doing it this way and I'd recommend that you put arrow, uh, super glue on to hold it in place, then arrowdite underneath for a stronger bond after the, um, the super glue is uh, holding it in place. Um, super glue is great as you'll see if you've seen my other construction videos for holding things in place whilst the arrow tight is drying. So I'm just getting it set right so that it's as straight as possible across the gun shield and through the centre of the weapon. And the wheels are nice and simple, bit of arrow tight and a bit of blue tack just to hold it in place and that's us done for construction so everything is assembled checked cleaned and good to go for airbrushing. Now I've got my extractor booth, my airbrush, my compressor and extractor tube because I'm going to be using Tamiya for almost all the airbrushing and Tamiya is a very powerful smelling paint shall we say. You don't want to be breathing it in. Um, I'm using the acrylic thinner and you've just got to take one smell at it and know you don't want to be breathing it in so I'm also, I will also be using a va proper vapour mask uh, not just a face covering but a proper vapour mask so um, a little bit first of all on my airbrush I don't have an expensive airbrush this one cost about £30 and it's been running for year after year after year after year I honestly can tell you I mean you're probably talking about getting on for eight years and the, the nozzle that's currently got is I've had that for about five years so look after it and it'll last now it's not a super duper expensive hundred pound up airbrush I don't know if those kind of airbrushes make any difference to the outcome I certainly don't feel as though I need to get one and I would always recommend somebody who was going to start airbrushing to start with a cheap one I mean I actually got another one of these free with a compressor and uh, so it, it, they're not expensive in themselves and you get to learn the ropes and know where you're going to get the benefit from anything more expensive as opposed to buying something expensive and then wrecking it because airbrushes are very much rubbish and rubbish out if the balance of paint thinner and air pressure isn't right then you're you're going to get um, you're going to get clogged up basically, S splatters everywhere. So that's the key. Uh, good quality mixture of paint going in and out. Now uh, the compressor is a fairly box standard on-demand compressor. It's on just now, but it's not doing anything. Okay. Trigger the airbrush and away it goes. And this is a good one because it doesn't walk all over the, the uh, all over the floor. My old airbrush, which is dead now, air compressor rather, it, you see it sitting on the towel there, that's to try and keep it in the one spot because it would it'd be like a washing machine on a fast spin. Uh, this one is really good, it just sits on the table, um, which is a lot easier to use in that respect. And then just a good old extractor booth, I've given this a wee clean, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, and always remember to clean the um, uh, the filter there, I've not done it for a while but it's basically just wash it and it comes out fine 
Uh, I've got my wee Tamiya turntable and then on top of that I've just stuck down a bit, I've just changed it. I've just got the bottom off a shop bought pizza. You know the bit of card or in some cases bits of foam. And I stick that on top. Helps the dirt not get out of control. Um, now the paints that I use, first of all if I'm going to be using Vallejo, now actually Tamiya paint is something I only really use when I'm painting Germans. I like the colours that Vallejo have got for the other nations but not for the Germans. But when I'm using Vallejo I use their airbrush thinner. It's brilliant. I don't add any flow improver to it because I don't have any. If I did I probably would. Uh, you might find that will reduce uh, paint drying on the needle which will be a major cause of clogging. And for Tamiya I use the acrylic thinner. And then to clean everything, I can't see past this, I've tried other other airbrush cleaners and, but this is perfect. Once again it's fellatio, cleans it up a treat. So the plan for these guys is um, I'm doing these for a friend and he's he usually gives me challenging um, jobs to do. These are not just going to be one uh, colour throughout, one sc camo scheme throughout. These guys are going to be, they two will be different as will that and then this will be sort of more typical three tone uh, camo but only on the, um, the gun shield, the rest of it will just be uh, dark yellow as will the trails. So I'm going to be starting off by giving this a coat of dark grey. I'm also going to use that dark grey to undercoat the resin base, um, the resin base units. Because a bit of undercoat will be good. Tamiya's a really good undercoat, it's a really strong paint. And then I will be moving on to, once again, like as I said, a bit of a challenge, a bit of Vallejo for the base colour for these guys because they're going to be hull red and dark yellow. So you'll be able to see me using both Tamiya and Vallejo when I'm doing the airbrushing here. Now for lighting, by the way, I've got a light directly above it and then I've got one at the side which I can move around. Well, there we go. Good lighting's really important. A turntable's good as well, though most stuff I'll just be picking it up and moving it around with my hand, so my hands will be changing colour uh, throughout the session. So, uh, I'm going to start off with the the German grey, I think. That's what I'll go for first, guys. I'm going to go for German grey for the Horsch staff car. Or is it a style? Not sure. Uh, and the basis, so I'll start there. Okay, mixing my Tamiya paint. First of all, guys, I always start never shake. Shaking it puts a lot of paint, well, a lot of thinner up on it than the lid. Um, so I prefer to mix it. Now, this has probably been used before and any excess paint from the airbrush is poured back in. So there's probably a little bit of thinner in there. Now, that means I've always got to judge things by eye and look and feel. There is no, you know, absolute way of getting the perfect mixture um, every time. So I have poured some thinner and you can see it's enough to fill the cavity at the bottom and a little bit more. Now, before I add any paint in, I'm going to draw the needle back a few times, not letting any air out, just drawing the needle back. What that does is it allows thinner to enter the nozzle, which means the nozzle is full of thinner and less likely to get any paint in whilst I am mixing it in. So I'm going to pour the paint directly into here and then I'm going to mix it. Um, I tend to go for a bit of 50-50 erring on the side of the thinner more than the paint, depending on what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to pour that in and then show you how it looks from my end. Right folks, that's the paint been added. Hopefully you can see it's still very thin. It's not as thick 
as it is in the bottle. Kind of goes without saying, but it's a good guide for you. Now the half tracks with the where are we hull red. If I had Tammy a hull red, I would use that, but I couldn't find any. So I'm using the Valesio with the airbrush thinner. I may have some model air hull red, but I'm quite happy to mix up my own. So I have, if I can find the airbrush, put enough just to fill the little depression at the bottom. And then using the dropper on this, I'm going to put seven drops into um, the bottom there. So I'm going to do that and then show you the, how it looks. So there we go, that's it mixed. I used a brush and a little bit of blowback from the needle as well. As you can see, it's got a nice flow down the side of the cup. That was seven drops. Now bear in mind, folks, that every bottle of Valesio will be different. So seven drops from one bottle is not the same as seven drops from the next. So look how heavy the drops are, how much thinner there is, how much pig pigment there is, and make sure you get into the right consistency, not just the right number of drops. So airbrushing is very noisy, so I'm, I'm going to do a, a narration over this. And I'm starting with the Tamiya German Grey, um, uh, undercoating the uh, bases with it to begin with. That'll give a nice good foundation for the paint that's gone on there uh, by brush. And then I'm moving on to the, the Horsch Command Car and giving it its undercoat um, of, of the base under coat, the colour rather, of German Grey, as in this is like an older vehicle that is kind of hung about uh, and being incorporated into this battery for some nice variety in the different camel schemes. Internal areas are quite hard to reach and oh I seem to have gone blue for some reason I don't know why that happened folks but um, it's not going to look very blue for very long with the uh, hull red that's coming out there brush any minute there we go Felizio hull red folks you're probably thinking this is a very strong camel colour but bear with us wait until you see what the, uh, the end product looks like because there will be a lot less red visible but here it's uh, fairly simple, just hammer that paint on, don't drown any areas, keep your brush moving. Areas that are, that are hard to reach because of the depth or the sculpting, such as the wheels, will just make sure that you're turning the vehicle or moving your airbrush so that you're hitting it from the required angles. There, I'm hitting those internal spaces again which can be tricky there i'm just trying to get the tracks and the wheels i like a nice solid coating in there it's very easy to miss something in, in between the tracks and the, the running board as well um, I want to make sure that's got a nice covering. And as you can see, I'm getting multicoloured fingers here as well. But that's easily cleaned off. So more complex shapes can take longer. Those wheel hubs are really quite difficult because they're so deep. Now these guys are ready for some camouflage. I'm, all, I'm going to be using just dark yellow at this point on them. There will be no buff added. I'll be adding the buff for the basic cam or for the undercoat of the, the guns themselves, the 88s. But for these guys, I'll just be using the very, very 
bright dark yellow on their base coats. One thing to note when you are using buff and dark yellow together, it can desaturate things a bit. So I like to add a bit of clear yellow to the gloss varnish. Uh, that's the, the clear coat. Oh, it's appeared as if by magic. There are new Tamiya colours out now for German three-tone camel. I've not got any, but I've seen them in use and they look really quite good, it, with the exception of the brown. The brown looks weird and orange. The, the green looks really good and the yellow looks really good. So you might want to check them out and not just go by what you see uh, on this video here. But uh, I'll certainly show you what I've got and uh, currently and um, how I'm going to apply it. So you can see I've taken the needle cap off. That can give you a finer spray and it also makes it easier to clean the needle. As you will see at some point, so I'll have to clean the needle here um, because the paint is drying. Hopefully you can also see that this cheap little airbrush can give you some really fine lines. It might be possible for me to get finer too, but in this uh, kit, I want it to look like grey and yellow, as opposed to grey with tiny, tiny little lines. I think that would prob probably be too much um, for my eyes to even do. But you can get finer lines again, as you'll see with the gun shield. Now with the half track, I want to have more kind of like uh, blotches and, and patches rather than just lines because I need to get to keep the undercoat visible, that um, red brown, that's the important thematic colour for them, but I don't want it to utterly dominate. And you can see me just working the brush, uh, the airbrush there a bit to try and get the flow bet the better. Spraying onto the, the little turntable. Incidentally, I put pizza bases, shop bought pizzas, I uh, put the bases on top of the, the plastic turntable there uh, because it's the plastic turntable's got so much paint on it, it's unbelievable. And you can uh, just swap off these little uh, pizza um, bases as they get dirty. Uh, as long as you eat pizza, um, you can regularly do it and keep everything nice and clean. And there I'm having a little bit of flow problems, so just a, a clean of the needle. But Tamiya tends to work uh, very, very well for me anyway. Felicio does too. But Tamiya seems to be have a bit more reliability for the trickier airbrushing camels, patterns and such likes. Having said that, I now have it clean the needle. You may also find that you have to unscrew the cap and uh, clean inside the cap there may be paint around the inner surface of the, the opening of the nozzle. Anything that could catch the paint on the way out could cause it to dry. But if you've not got a lot of experience with airbrush, just look at all the different components as you're going. If you're having problems, just try and tackle each bit in turn. Start from the needle and work your way back into the nozzle. And if your paint uh, mixes right, you shouldn't have a great deal of problems. You can see most of the red is disappearing. There's a lot of red you're still seeing because it's on the seats and 
on the stowage, but once again that will disappear too. So we're getting a two-tone camel, which is just about as much yellow with red accents as red with yellow accents. Now we are brushing the guns. You have to be careful with these because it's quite tricky to get into all the little nooks and crannies, all the recesses uh, without flooding it. So I'm kind of just pumping the airbrush into, into it as opposed to giving it a constant flow. I can't really turn it to you at the moment to show you. But I'm trying to just hit all the different angles and with the intention of coming back for another another pass at it, so to speak, and to look for the areas that have been missed and work on them specifically. And there I'm giving a much more of a flow when I'm hitting the gun shield front and back. So that's everything that's going to be dark yellow undercoated. I undercoated the uh, ammo cases as well because I'm going to be giving them a yellowish tan sort of um, colour, so I thought that would help. There's not going to be any camel on the bogies, so they're done. Same with the gun cruciforms. So it's really just the, the gun shields that we're going to be doing. And you've got red, brown and olive green. Red, brown is my nemesis for Tamiya paint. As you can see, I've not recorded the um, the airbrushing of it. It's more or less the same as what you see here with the green, except with much, much more swearing. It seems to want to dry and come out um, really gritty and grainy, which is really frustrating. So it's quite a hard one for me to mix for some bizarre reason. Perhaps somebody can share their experience in the comments. But there you go. Nice thin lines, nice busy camel pattern. Come over, come over, there you go. Nice busy camel pattern with a cheap airbrush.